Kelpie dragged the last of the destroyed crops from the field. A large pile of wilted foliage had built up. Flames were already spreading through the debris. Captain Locke patted the water horse's side. A final thanks as it finished its work. He handed a strip of meat which it chewed on lazily. He'd take it back to the rivers afterwards. He leaned back and watched as the druids and farmers got to work. The farmers sowed the seeds before the spellcasters wove their magic. A hum ran through the air as they worked through the day. Tiny green shoots pushed through the dirt. They were small, but soon grew to waist height. Reaching down, he ran his fingers through the dirt. It was dry and wouldn't sustain the crops. But the priests were already ahead of that problem. At the temple, they were praying, and their chants didn't go unanswered. Looking to the hills outside of town, Captain Lark saw a white elephant. It had three heads which looked over the lake before it. Welcome back to Mythical Philology Adventures. I'm your guide, Jason. Many creatures in mythology are terrifying and are plight on humanity, but not all. Aravata from India is one creature which aids the world. Let's take a look at a creature which a god has chosen as his steed. Aravata is the king of elephants from Hindu mythology, and called Arawan in Thai. Its appearance varies from region to region. It some has one head but four tusks and seven trunks, and is pure white. In Thailand, it has been said to have up to 33 heads. The most common is just three heads, however. There are a few tales of its origin, and one is the child of Iravata, while another tells of how it came from the ocean of milk where the elixir of immortality originates. And another, it came from the eggshells of the Garuda. Regardless, Iravata serves as the storm god Indra's mount in battle. Regardless of the origin, Iravata serves an important role. It takes either the celestial water or the water of the underworld, depending on the source, and sprays it upwards into the sky to make clouds. This is an impressive feat. It means Aravada takes on the role of evaporation in the water cycle. Now, Asian and African elephants are well known to be sucking up water from the trunks and spraying the water over their back, or into their mouth to drink. They can suck up water up to 335 miles per hour, or 151 meters per second, according to studies. To create such a force, it will need to rely on the strength of its diaphragm and intercostal muscles. An elephant's trunk can hold 5.5 liters and has 8 major muscle groups. It's classified as a muscular hydrostat, similar to your tongue. Now, to get water into clouds, Aravata will need to spray water up to the cloud layer. At the lowest height, that will be 10,000 feet or 3,000 meters. On the high end, however, we have 60,000 feet or 18,000 meters. Now, since this is on Earth, we can actually figure out the velocity at which Aravata can spray water. Using the equation of velocity final squared equals velocity initial squared plus 2 times 9.8 meters per second, which is the deceleration from gravity, and times our distance of 3,000 meters. That gives a velocity of 2.42 meters per second. For a maximum for height, it would be 594 meters meters per second, or 541 miles per hour and 1,329 miles per hour. It will take about 50 seconds to, and 121 seconds to reach the height if this is the minimum velocity. The world land speed record is 763 miles per hour, or 341 meters per second, or about Mach 1. This elephant is able to spray water faster than the sound barrier. This is assuming that Aravata is spraying water straight up and neglects air resistance. The truth is, the velocity to get up there would be much higher. To achieve such a feat, we'll need to massively increase the strength of Aravata's diaphragm and intercostal muscles, majorly. A normal elephant can spray water at 3.7 liters per second and inhales at 334 miles per hour or 141 meters per second, like I mentioned before. That is also about the speed it can blow air out. Now air is much easier to push than water. At bare minimum, air Roger's respiratory muscles are significantly stronger than normal elephants. Now, the average cloud has 500 tons or 510,000 liters of water in it. If the average elephant can hold 5.5 liters in its trunk, then it would take 93,000 trunkfuls of water to produce one cloud. We can't figure out how long it would take to make a cloud, but first, we need to look at Aravata's noses. Regardless of which appearance is given, it has multiple trunks. 
So, can an air vault suck water up one trunk while blowing it out another? That depends on a few things, such as how the nasal cavities are set up. If they are linked, it could be possible to have water go in one trunk and out the other. But there's a problem. All trunks use the same intercostal muscles and diaphragm to breathe. That means it can only breathe in or out at any time. It is an all or nothing situation for it. So no, air water will need to produce a cloud of between inhaling water and exhaling it. So at 510,000 liters at 3.7 liters per second, that would come to 38.3 hours per cloud with one trunk. That is removing the amount of time to stop, breathe, suck up more water. With the extra trunks, it could be done faster. With the lowest number of trunks of three trunks, means 13 hours minimum. Does anyone see the problem here? The average rainstorm has 72,000 tons or 7.3 million liters of water. This is worldwide, not just one nation. That comes to 1,440 times more water than one cloud. And how many days would everybody need to do that? Let's see, 13 hours times 1,440 comes to roughly 780 days per rainstorm. And rain comes more than once every two years, right? Thus, we can assume air water will need to be much faster. One option is to allow it to expand its trunk to hold more water. A normal elephant can do this up to 9 liters. This isn't going to be enough to make a single rainstorm within a reasonable amount of time, though. Since Aravata originates from around India, let's look at how much rain they get a year, which comes to about 4,000 cubic kilometers a year, or 960 cubic miles a year, or 4 times 10 to the 12th cubic meters a year, or 4 times 10 to the 15th power liters. So roughly 11 billion liters a day, or 127 million liters a second. That's how much Aravata would need to send skyward. More if we start to include other nations. Needless to say, this elephant will need to absorb and spray water at a much faster rate than our other poultry estimates from before. Most likely, it will need the help of evaporation to do this. If not, it would be too much on its own. After all, it's estimated there are 1.4 times 10 to 15th power liters of water evaporate each day worldwide. Now, of course, we all know that math could be off. I went for biology, not mathematics in college. We still need to figure out the head and brain alignment, though. Elephants have a very limited neck. Basically, all they can do is nod, even then in a limited range. One option with multiple head options is to fuse the skulls together, and that have a single cranial cavity for the brain. This could help reduce the weight from the heads and simplify the nervous system. We also need to strengthen neck muscles extensively and fuse the cervical vertebrae to support the full weight. If it is the variant which only has a single head but multiple trunks, we will need to rework the nasal bones prominently to strengthen them. A simple solution would be to split the trunks at the base rather than create multiple nasal cavities. As for tusks, normal tusks are modified teeth. It would be rather simple to modify additional teeth into tests. Aravata has fought in many battles with Indra, and it isn't an easy foe to face. Now, his greatest option is his ability to spray water. Even with the lowest estimate of power, it would be devastating. While slower than a high-pressure water cutter, it will be devastating to be struck by. I don't care what kind of armor you have on be it gambeson, leather, chainmail, or even plate. You'll be blown away at best. At worst, you'll be sliced in half. You'll be dead. Can you dodge? Not fast enough. Unless fighting over an extremely long range, you'll be in danger. Any water fired from Aravata will feel as if it was made of steel when it collides. A shield or weapon will break. You can't take a blow like this. Thanks to the versions where it has multiple heads, this gives several eyes looking in different directions, including forward. This corrects the problems that most herbivores struggle with. Since their eyes are set wide apart, they lack depth perception, and the ability to properly judge distances. With multiple sets of eyes, that can be fixed, and Ayurveda would be able to aim accurately with its range attacks. 
This leads to Aravada's greatest weakness. He can't create water. Either from celestial water or the water of the underworld is needed. And if you can cut off access from that, you can close the distance. Freezing it with ice magic will close that avenue. But if you are an alchemist, you have two other options. One, fill the water with a noxious substance that Aravada doesn't want in his nose. Another option is to thicken the water up until it can't be sucked up. But that brings up an issue. What if he just uses the trunks to throw the thickened water or any other large heavy object at you? Elephants are strong enough to knock over trees, and there is nothing stopping Erebot from using that strength here. If you close in, he has those long tusks to pierce all but the heaviest of armors, and the trunks can grab and crush you. Don't fight head on. You'll want to circle about and come from back in the side. That is the safest point in battle. Yet, like all elephants, his skin is tough, with a large body. Most weapons are going to struggle to reach vital organs. Spears and large weapons will work best. A bow and arrow will struggle to get a deep blow, though. Magic is questionable here. This is a divine creature, and that means there is a high chance of magical resistances. Ideally, the best way to fight is to come from underground. Dig a trench that he can fall into. There is one final thing to consider. Erevata serves Indra, and the god will ride into battle on his back. And I can't argue. I think Indra has the right idea on a mount. Precision long range attacks that can complement his own powers. Indra is the god of storms, rain, and lightning, among other things. Those three, however, are the issue. Indra can turn the clouds into rain, providing Ervato with ammunition for range attacks. Now, water can conduct electricity. So long as he doesn't shock his ride, this is a perfect setup. Honestly, the only reason I would choose to go against a god would be if I was allied with his enemies. Now, supposedly, Erevata did retire from battle after one of his tusks was broken. Possibly, if you could achieve the same feat, he may fall back. But I can't promise that. After all, Erevata didn't leave the battlefield until the end of the fight, even after his tusk was broken. So, questionable. Overall, Erevata is a dangerous foe. His only weakness comes from his the lack of his ability to generate water himself. Still, he has a powerful range attack that can reach the cloud layer. If it can see you, it can attack you. Even without that, it is a physical powerhouse. That is why I'm giving Erevata a 9 of 10 for difficulty while alone. Yet, if Indra is present, that difficulty will skyrocket to the point it's almost unmatchable. So, let me ask you a question. Why are you wanting to fight this creature? He's the loyal steed of a god. Are you wanting a god's wrath? That would be a reward if you do kill Erevata. That is something I would recommend avoiding. Erevata falls into the range of creatures I would recommend not getting to fight with. The reward isn't worth the risk. Erevata led a chorus of trumpet calls through its many trunks. It dipped each of its long trunks into the lake and drew water up into itself. It looked down on the poor village. Captain Locke thought it was smiling at them as it lifted its trunks to the sky. Spreading them out, he sprayed the water wide. It arched out. The sunlight sparkled on the water droplets as they floated out above the fields and rained down on them. Captain Locke let the rain fall all over his face as the fields came to life. Yes, things were back on track now. He savored the moment as he thought of his next move. Erevata is a powerful creature with an important role. He has served a deity in his work and in battle. This is a foe best avoided. Thank you for watching, adventurers. Please return next week where we should be Nanawe of Hawaii. Until then, I'll see you on the road.